Alternative Radio. Today's episode, Missy and I are talking about belonging. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. about uh, daily practical life tips that you can do to find your happiness and your inner peace. And today we're going to be discussing belonging. How are you, Missy? I, I see you're back outside for- Back outside. It's early yes. this morning, so there's no humidity, no heat, and the, and the breeze is just amazing today. So I love the you know, I get to sit down, sit down and soak up the rustling of the leaves and watch the birds fly by and stuff like that. So if you see me trailing off, if you're watching this on YouTube, then that's what I'm doing. I swear I'm not, you know, spacey. Not that much anyway. <laughs> not hallucinating. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't see trails. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. So yeah, about yourself? So how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. The uh, weather has changed uh, for those who are watching this. That, that is not a imaginary backdrop. Yeah. Um, actually, the last few video episodes have been my imaginary green screen. Um, but uh, this is real. I'm, I'm actually outside. The weather is nice. And I have my cup of coffee and my peace mug. Yeah, so, nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, life is pretty good right now, I, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. It looks beautiful there. And I heard the birds chirping when we first got online. Yeah, hopefully they'll uh, swing their way back. Um, I have had some aircraft coming by, uh, so we'll, we'll hope they stay away for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yes, it is nice. We, we got a nice cool breeze. So life is good. We have to be thankful for these little gifts. Absolutely. Get. Absolutely. Well, and then I think that's part of, let, that's a good segue into what we're talking about today is like, you know, belonging and, and uh, how we get to feel grateful for the things that we do belong to, right? You know, um, I don't know if, you know, I'm going to start it off by saying something to the effect of, uh, there's a, a, a series called One Strange Rock. Right, and it's it's a it's a amazing series about um, <clears throat> about eleven astronauts who go into space and you know get to see the world from a different point of view than all of us. And uh, basically, the culmination of of all of the episodes kind of comes down to the fact that they they really get to see the world differently. And and really, it's it's about belonging. You know, it's about being one with this living planet and, and um, belonging to the human race and, and um, having the ability to create on this planet, you know, build things, you know, extremely uh, un incredible manifestations that we all come up with, you know, whatever they may be, and that, that allow us to, you know, be part of something bigger than just this body. You know, yep. so anyways, highly, I highly recommend that if, if, if anybody's interested in that kind of, uh, you know, series, but it's a neat documentary. I'm going to have to check that out. The uh, space and astronomy has, has always been a uh, fascination of mine. And yeah. um, I wouldn't say a hobby because I don't really study it, but um, I do read and listen to podcasts about it. And that is one of the things actually that I, I've often wondered because you know, my message is always about perspective and shifting perspective. Yeah. And yeah, I, I can't imagine what it would be like to look at our planet from afar, you know, to, to get that perspective, you know, because we can't, I mean, sitting here, we, we can't no. get that very no. large picture perspective. Um, and and I, I just can't even creatively imagine what what that perspective gives you yeah it's got to be awe-inspiring 
right? It, it has to be awe inspiring, you know, and because like I was actually walking up my driveway last night and it's a half moon right now. And I just stared up at it thinking, what if I was there looking here, you know, and the difference, you know, the, the blue planet, right? The living planet, the water, the trees, the eruptions of volcanoes. Like, I know that this is really not about the subject of belonging as much as, but it, in perspective it is because this is what we get we get we get to take care of this world we get to be a part of this world and you know that makes me want to do something greater than worry about myself um indulging needs right you know like going shopping and and don't get me wrong those are fun and i think that they're amazing things and but like when i think of it on a greater level, I, f I feel like that's what we're here to, you know, create um, that sense of belonging where, where we can all just, you know, live and love and, and uh, learn, definitely learn. We definitely learn from each other, right? Um, but I think that that's part of the creation that, that we've been given. And, and I totally agree. And when I look at this notion of, of belonging it, it takes me kind of back to the question of well why are we here yeah. and and i'm not saying it from a, a spiritual sense necessarily more of the philosophical you know why are we here i mean do we have right. a purpose yeah um and and i i think when you look at purpose doesn't purpose usually if, if it's going to have any meaning have something to do with other people oh yeah yeah, you know, absolutely. If, you, if you look at like, why am I specifically here on this planet at this time? Right. The only answer I can come up with that, that would have any sense of meaning about it is going to include other people. Right. You know, why would I as an individual be here just to be here by myself? What, what purpose or meaning could that serve? So, so in the course that I take, uh, you know, and I know I mention it a lot, but it's just been so impactful on me. Uh, the A Course in Miracles, the book, um, they talk about seed and soil, right? And when we're in the masculine sense, which is like our doership and, you know, getting things done and our focus and our ability to focus, that's the masculine and the creative side and the ability to kind of be the container for things is um, the context is the feminine side. And we really are supposed to, whether I'm a female or male, I'm supposed to be able to balance those things. Or I think that that's part of the purpose is to balance those things. And I, I start to recognize that when I look at my children, when I look at the people in my family, when I look at my friends or the work relationships that I hold, um, and even my relationship, you know, where I get to be creative with you, um, I get to embody in those that soil, right? So I'm the seed. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm the soil, you're the seed, right? And you get to blossom into whatever the pattern is that the soil and the seed hold. And that's what I'm starting to realize that that sense of belonging, I might not get the spotlight in this lifetime, right? I might not be, you know, the next Mel Robbins or, or Tony Robbins or whatever. I might not be that, but maybe I get to be the soil where somebody else will excel to that level in their life. And, um, and that makes me feel like I'm the stage there in the spotlight, right? They're, you know, and that makes me feel like I'm participating. I'm, I'm, I'm fulfilling a purpose, even though, you know, the ego side of me does go, well, what about me? Well, what's wrong with me? Well, how come I can't, I'll never do that. You know, like there's those things that still come up every now and then, but, but the belonging sense, when I look at it that way, that shift in perspective, kind of like you said um, earlier, it just helps me to realize that, that, uh, we all have that special part, you know, and, and, you know, you also are soil as much as, you know, I get to be seed, right? Because we learn from one another and you hold the container for me to learn things bigger and better. So I think that that's a, a huge part of what other people have to do. And 
how we can grow from those relationships when we figure out what we are. We figure out, are we the soil or are we the seed? Am I learning here or am I holding a container for somebody else to grow? And I don't know if this is possible, but if we can shift the perspective of your perspective. Right. So we're doing a lot of shifting of perspectives. Sure. But, you know, when you talk about the sense of belonging and that some of us are soil and seed, some of us may be the star and some are the stage, you know, that the star stands on. When I look at all of that and that shift in perspective, that's where the belonging comes in because the one needs the other. Yeah. It's not that one is more important than the other. You know, right. so when you talk about, say, you know, like a, a Robin's up on stage and he's getting all the praise and accolation and, and all that. But if it weren't for the stage. That's right. Where would he stand? You know, <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and the same thing with, you know, seed and soil. You, you can't have growth of a seed if you don't have the soil unless you're doing aquaponics. But that's a different right, right, right. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, and, and someone's going to comment and say, yeah, you can, but, yeah, but yeah. you know what I'm saying here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, and that, that, like, and there's other things, right? They, not only do you need soil, you need sunlight, you need water, you need, so there's a lot of things that hold context for that seed to grow. Um, and, you know, I think that I look back to when I was a child, right? And I look at the memories that I, believe are true. And there was no barrier, right? There was no barrier between me and my next door neighbor or me and my friend or, you know, and, and that's what I think that belonging is. It's not, you know, are we both females? Are we, you know, are we both thin females? Are we both blonde females, right? Or with purple hair, right? Uh, you know, there's things all the time that when we go out in public, like I see somebody with purple hair and I immediately go, oh, I love your hair. And they look at me and they go, oh, I love your hair, right? And so there's a, a cute little sense of belonging, but grander it, on a larger scale, it, it, we're belonging all the time. Like, um, I was talking with a girlfriend of mine who is really just, she's an amazing woman and she doesn't see that right now. She's ha she's in the dip right now. And um, one of the things that, you know, of course she feels loneliness because physically there's no one there. So she physically feels like I'm lonely, I'm alone. And I'm like, you're not alone. You're never gonna be alone. There's no way you can be alone. And it's the reaching out for yourself. Like sometimes that's what it, it's taught me that when I'm alone and I'm being reclusive, then I'm closing myself off, right? To not belonging. And so opening ourselves up to that leads to a whole, I mean, going into the grocery store. Okay, well, I got to pick up stuff for dinner tonight or my family members are there and they're going to come home tonight and they're going to, you know, be around me. It, there's a big difference between being open to receiving that love and being closed off to receiving it because you know we walk around with attitudes we don't smile at people we just go in get our stuff done and that's a lot in the masculine you know which is there's nothing wrong with that but at the same time if you want to be creative and you want to have that openness to be able to uh you know have a new opportunity well you never know if you're going to be close to i'm alone you know or that's the only possibility for you right then when you go out in public you never know you could meet a, a new person. I mean, I went to yoga on the beach last week and, you know, hit it off with a lady like that. And, you know, we became best buds right there on the beach. And it was like, that was awesome. I was open to that. But if I were, you know, in a different mindset, then I would feel like I didn't belong. And she and I were total different creatures. She was a dancer. I am not flexible. I mean, you know, like she was a brunette, I'm a blonde. So that we were able to admire each other in our differences even shows that there's something deeper on the, the level of belonging. Well, and, and I think that's one of the things that's getting in the way of society right now. And not to get into a debate of the critique of society necessarily, but <laughs> It, it appears that we're at a point that we're longing for this belonging. Yeah. But I wonder if we're looking at it from a perspective that's not healthy, because it seems that people are looking for the belonging in the opposite of what you were just saying. They're mm. looking for the belonging of similar. 
yeah. you know, who has my, um, you know, story, who can relate to me, who looks like me, who, right. you know, and, and we seem to be on this larger scale grouping ourselves amongst people who either look like me or have a lived experience as I, so that we can have that sense of belonging. Yeah. Which nothing against that, but I think what we're missing is the bigger picture of belonging that mm. I don't think belonging necessarily means I have to have lived your story. I think it's the bigger sense of belonging as we're both humans. Well, you know, know, and leaving it at that higher level of, of that, that's how we belong to each other. And then, you know, sure, look at similarities, differences, whatever. So, I mean, I think that most of our listeners probably have heard of the law of attraction, right? And like attracts like. Um, And I feel that the greatest gift that anybody can give me is the ability to um, teach. And not because I'm, I know something better. I've done it many times before and I failed and I can teach you what not to do. It doesn't, it's not like that. In the sense of teaching, what I mean is, really having the ability to kind of let the love flow through me. And the reason it's a gift to me is because I get to learn as I'm teaching. We teach what we most need to know, right? And, you know, I I can't think of one person who hasn't had a story and walked into a room and went, oh my gosh. And then five other people went, oh my gosh, me too, right? And we do that for a sense of belonging. So I I completely understand what you're saying. and it's both on, on a uh, what we want and what we don't want side, right? right. And um, so I think that there's some, some benefit in learning from either way. Yeah, I, I think as long as it doesn't become exclusionary. Yeah, oh no, for sure, that's great, you know, good point. Because I, I would agree with what you're saying. I mean, to me, I think self-help groups of any ilk I've I've always um, recommended in all my years of, of counseling and uh, focusing on substance use. Um, I, I've always encouraged self help groups, right? Because one of the reasons they work is that you can walk into a room and you have a bunch of people who can say, "Yeah, I get it," yeah. and honestly, get it. Yeah. Um, they're not just saying I get it; they've lived this experience and and we can belong in that sense of lived experience absolutely so definitely nothing wrong with that um but i think we're fracturing ourselves right now by maintaining these um belonging groups without looking at a bigger picture of belonging well um to your point, I think I, I, I like to share that there's two ends of the pole, what you want and what you don't want. And where you put your energy is what you're going to get out of life, yep. right? And what you're going to get out of belonging. So uh, it's what you want and the lack thereof, right? That's, I think, uh, how Abraham Hicks puts it. And um, it really causes you to kind of stop a minute and and like we all have that little voice when we're getting ready to let's say tease somebody or make fun of something like really should I sh- I probably shouldn't do this but I'm going to do it anyway because it's going to be hilarious right or um we we ignore the little voice is what I'm trying to say and um I think that the vibration in those kind of groups what it does is um it can pull you up or it can pull you down right yeah. and so again it's just it's just all where you're focusing your energy I think yep totally agree yeah. What um, what what do you think someone could do if if they feel they don't belong, in the general sense of belonging, and really long to belong? Mm. How do you even start to belong? Um. Gosh. So without trying to be too overly spiritual, I first try to remind people that you're not a body right you're you're what's living inside of that body so you can never be broken harmed damaged you know um 
you're perfect, whole, and complete, basically. And everybody is. And so when you look at people as that's who they are, and you look at yourself as that's who you are, you are a lot more forgiving towards when you fall asleep. Let's call it falling asleep because we're all, we've all had those high points, right? And then we all get back down into the low points. And um, again, I'm, I'm gonna quote Abraham Hicks. It's like a little baby. If that little baby was falling asleep, you wouldn't be like, get up you stupid baby. And that's what we do, right? So just be kind to yourself and remember you are where you are to be able to learn and grow and, um, and reach out. I mean, like, I don't mean reach out to dump everything that you're feeling on other people, but figure out what you do enjoy, whether it's going outside and, and walking in nature or taking a bike ride or, you know, some sort of exercise or creativity, artwork, singing, music. You know, there are tons of things that will help you just even a little bit at a time, raise your vibration, but you have to be intentional about, about that. And as long as you are, you'll get to where you're supposed to be. And, and you'll, you'll pull yourself out of the hole as long as you stop focusing on the hole that you're in. Yeah, I, I think that's very true because that you do get what you put out there in in you know that sense that you know if you're in the hole and you feel like that's how the world is well that's where you're going to stay yeah yeah if you imagine yourself outside of that you know then that's going to be different um and i think in in the sense of belonging you know it, it's using each other's gifts and creativity yeah um for some reason, the, the examples popped in my head. I haven't thought of this one for ages. Um, the story of a donkey stuck in a well. Yep. And the person starts filling up the well with dirt. Yeah. You know, and everybody's looking at him like, well, why are you burying the donkey? Yeah. But the in reality, yep. <laughs> yeah, the donkey was shaking it off, but was able to climb onto that next level of dirt. Yeah. And then get buried, shake it off, and hit the next level where eventually the donkey jumps out of a, you know, yeah. and, and that was the whole point of filling it with dirt, wanting to bury the, you know, donkey. But, you know, if you look at that negative and say you're burying a donkey alive, you know, stop doing what you're doing. Yeah. Well, then the donkey would have never been saved. Where if you can change your perspective and maybe look at a positive on what's going on. Yeah. You could have had that foresight and say, oh, wait a minute, you're onto something here. Yeah. Well, and I have two little anecdotes that I used to say very similar. One, one very similar is don't forget, you can't move a mountain overnight, but you can move it one dirt pile at a time, right? Yeah. And then two, I used to actually get down in the dirt. You know, if somebody was stuck in the mud, I would get in the mud with them because I thought that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm a friend, right? I'm going to fix this by helping them out and I'm going to just jump right in the, the mud. But, but if you're stuck in a hole... And I jump in with you, I'm not going to be able to help. But if I throw you a rope and pull you out, then then that's gonna that's gonna help a lot more. And so, um, you know, I think in, in that way, it's it's like that's what helps people to feel like they belong. People just want other people to care. You know, we all want other people to care. And uh, regardless of the situation, we don't know where anybody's been. We don't know what they're mentally going through, physically going through, how they're struggling financially or not. But we, 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 we could all use to stop jumping from to conclusions um, exactly. to, to make us all feel like we could belong a little bit better. Um, so I'm curious if our listener challenge mm -hmm. should be to see if our listeners are willing to reach out to someone who is nothing like them at all. Matter of fact, even somebody that they may have those kind of thoughts about and reach out to them and try to form a, a friendship with them to see, you know, who they are, what they feel, what kind of people they are and, and uh, extend that sense of belonging. How do you feel about that, Chris? 
I think that is probably one of the best and most challenging yeah. listener challenges we have had. And look, here's what I have to say. Take yourself on. That's mm-hmm. that's it. Take yourself on because look, there, I mean, what's good, the worst that's going to happen? No. Okay. Well, all right. I tried. I put effort yeah. out there. I, I, but when I say take yourself on, it's like, what, is, what does Yoda say? There is, there is no try, there is only do, right? You put effort into it and, and really make it something that, you know, because I, I have somebody right now that I have in mind that I'm like, I was ready to go kidnap her today and just go like, you know what? We're going for a walk because she's become very reclusive recently. And, um, and like I know that if I invite her, her, yeah, she has the ability on Facebook or whatnot to just not respond. Uh, she has the ability to not answer her phone, but if I show up, guess what? <laughs> You're going with me. There's no yeah, ifs exactly. and about it. And um, and even if she doesn't want to go, guess what? I can pull up a chair. I'm going to sit down and, and, yeah. and I'm going to take myself on for this because she's showing me a part of me that, that needs some love. That's mm-hmm. what's, you know, what, so I appreciate the reflection and I'm going to do something about it. Uh, I think that is an awesome challenge and and like I say, this is probably the biggest because th- this is going to impact, you know, us as individuals more than uh, I think some of the others because we actually have to confront another person. Rather than which work means on I'm ourselves. confronting myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look, we're all in a box. And mm-hmm. look, the only thing that's going to cause you to get out of that box is to extend yourself past it is to reach yep. out of your comfort zone. And um, I know you guys can do it. Like it, you know, it's, it's uh, intimidating. It can maybe cause a little bit of mental uh, frustration or anxiety even, but, but when you do it, you're gonna feel like that was so easy. Like, what was I even yeah. thinking? Why did I put myself in a mental prison, you know? So. Especially when it goes well, um, but a- as you say, you know, I encourage people to do it, even if it doesn't go well, then you just do it again, you know, yeah. find somebody else because, you know, we're not in control of other people. We're in control of ourselves. Yeah. So the whole challenge is to challenge yourself. So if you go challenge yourself and the other person is like, now go away. Okay, I go away, which means I'm going away to someone else. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to try somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, keep trying and keep challenging until you can actually do it. And that's when you're going to understand the growth and even your own belonging. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Yeah. That was good. I, I, I'm excited about today. I hope, I hope we actually, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited about the feedback we're going to get. Yeah. And, and really hoping for people to, you know, share what did they do for this challenge? Um, but I'm looking for, don't just share what you did. How did you overcome the struggle? Yeah. You know, so, you know, saying, Hey, you know, I, I went to my neighbor and, you know, or like with you, you know, I, I went over there and we walked. Okay. That that's great. Yeah. But what was your struggle? What, what did you overcome and how did you overcome that? Cause that's where the learning comes in. You know, it's not just you go to your neighbor and, you know, do something and extend yourself, but Mm. how were you able to do that? Because we can have some listeners sitting back going, I I just can't do the challenge. I don't even know how to do the challenge. Right. Well, teach them how to do the challenge. Sometimes we got to step outside ourselves and that's it. You know, I mean, we all have our own little bubble that we're living in. We've got our our kids, our work, our, our bills, our houses, our cars, whatever, Sometimes, you know, extending yourself outside of your own personal bubble is the challenge. Mm -hmm. So we make time for what's important, right? Exactly. Let's make this important. Yeah. I love it. Thanks, Chris. Awesome. Well, thank you. That that, that was a great suggestion. And just to remind our listeners, uh, you know, Missy and I don't script this. Um, so these are our thoughts that just pop up and th- this was a great listener challenge that, you know, just, uh, kind of popped up and then I'm, I'm really excited about it to see yeah. what people are going to do, you know, with the challenge. And, um, so I, I would encourage, you know, all of you to share this podcast, to like it, comment it on any of the, the sources that you're listening to us. Um, 
And if you really do like it, you can uh, click the link and go buy us a cup of coffee. Um, and that will give you some perks and some rewards and gifts and uh, just to help support this show and, uh, you know, the, the mission and the message that we're trying to spread. So we will really Absolutely. appreciate that. We appreciate you all listening. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a great day, everyone. All right.